Welcome or welcome back to Trail and Ultra Running Training. My name is Will Franz. I'm a running coach and a strength coach. And the whole goal of this podcast is to help your training improve so that we can do a little better out on the trails. Today, we just have kind of a hodgepodge of things all under the umbrella of like what it means to care in your training and how to do that a little better. So if you appreciate this, please subscribe or leave a rating or review or any of those things that tell the algorithm that this is something you find valuable. So it pushes it to more people so that more people can find it valuable and we can just like snowball this thing. Anyway, first off, on Monday, I wrote an email that talked about gymnastics. And it's because I really enjoy gymnastics. Now, to be fair, I only watch it every four years, which I can't really say makes me a, a fan per se, um, but it does mean that at the Olympics, every four years, I enjoy watching men and women do things that seem absolutely insane to me, and I'm not sure uh, are physically possible until I watch them happen. Like some dude will hold on to a set of rings, do a bunch of flips, fall down into a maneuver that would dislocate both of my shoulders and then immediately pop up into a perfect iron cross and then rotate around his shoulder sockets into a planche in a way that doesn't actually make sense and to me looks like levitation. And then a couple days later, some woman runs down a vault line and springs off of a vault in some... Tri twists and flips that would immediately make my brain come out of my skull before like 20 minutes later, jumping back and forth between two parallel or un uneven bars rather, um, in a way that would uh, lead to me breaking my neck. And I'm thinking it might be witchcraft and it's very cool. And every four years I watch this stuff. And the thing I noticed this year is there was a very stark and important difference in the commentary than things I remember from when I was younger. I remember Beijing 2008, and there was this big conversation about how China had actually forged a birth certificate so that a 14-year-old could get in. And I also remember that while the commentary back then could have been how a 14-year-old girl was like preternaturally good at uneven bars. Instead, it was about how small she was and how much of a value it was that because she was smaller, it made it easier for her to fly through the air. There's also a long conversation about how like 21 and 22 year old women were too old or too big to be doing some of the, ma the maneuvers. And it made sense at the time, if we're being super honest, like physics and flying through air and all these things, but it was never said about the guys. And we also like fast. So let's force forward to this year. And I heard none of that and it might've happened, but if so, it was like, it was so minimal and I'm pretty sensitive to body comments due to both my job and my past. And I just didn't really notice it. And what I heard instead was people talking about how strong and powerful all of these athletes were and not blinking an eye at the fact that like a few of them were in their like mid to late 20s. And in fact, they even commented on how young the Romanian team was, even though I'm pretty sure they had an average age of like 17, which decade and a half ago was actually probably about the average age of the entire field. I didn't look it up. I could be wrong. But this is more... This is what I've noticed. It has been a big shift towards strength and power and reactivity and athleticism and speed and focusing on the fact that those are what is going to help you excel as an athlete and not how big or small you are or whatever number shows up on the scale. If you are strong and healthy, you will have your best chance of performing well. And if you train and you train hard and you lift heavy weights and for running, if you do speed works and you run a lot as much as you can recover from um, in your schedule, and if you fuel and if you sleep and et cetera, then you will perform well. And your weight is a factor, but not a focus. And if you train and fuel properly, or that, properly you'll hit your ideal weight whatever the hell that means, um, as a side effect of your hard work and training, not 
you won't train well because you hit some magic weight number. And it is just a nice shift to see because I think for so long, we have had this conversation about smaller being better in society, in sports, and it's just really good to see a like positive shift in a positive direction in a sport that, I mean, of many sports, gymnastics has a pretty good justifier of being smaller to be somewhat better because you are flying through space. And yet with bigger, stronger, more powerful athletes, we see feats that we've never seen before. And it just shows how much bullshit that's always been. Now, this is one of the reasons I love the Olympics. And despite the fact that the IOC is a notoriously corrupt organization, their problems and all the stuff, like it is a time when people come into the same room and work their asses off at sports. And we give a shit about something that is kind of inherently goofy and yet incredibly meaningful. And we get to hear stories of kids like the gymnasts from Brazil who would walk for hours in order to like make it to the gym just so they could someday have a, maybe a shot of like getting out of the favelas in Rio. And it's just a reminder that these things we do in some way matter because training and try to figure out what we do with our bodies and being active is important. And it sometimes feel like it's not as you're like running and doing goofy shit in the woods, but it does matter as much as anything else does. So to that end, I do often wish that more of us trained like we cared or rather I wish more people who said that they cared about their training trained in a way that matched what they said, right? Like, cause I have a very particular interaction with a wide range of people. Like someone will message me saying they've been training super hard for such and such. And it's their big goal this year. And it's their a goal. And they'll often have an injury or they're struggling with their food or they're having a gut issue or like a little pain somewhere. And they've been struggling for weeks and they just want to see what's going on. And I will almost always tell the person that there's no real way for me to help you through DMs. So can we please set up like a 15 minute chat and see what's up? And then I'd say like 95% of the time, either ghost me or tell me they're going to rest for two weeks and see it improves, which is fair. But if that's you, please hear me out because like, we should maybe take the help that is offered to us if we really care about the end goal. If you want it that badly, then you'd probably call a PT or a dietitian, or at the very least set up the short phone call with the random guy on the internet you contacted for advice. And don't get me wrong, I realize that there's a multitude of factors here. Some of it's money, which is why my consults are free and likely always will be because I have been through broke periods of my life. And if I can help you quickly for no money, then I would love to be able to do that. Um, but I also realize that nobody likes to be sold because it's fucking exhausting. I just signed up for a call to check out a new running platform. I'm not going to name it, but person spent like 15 minutes telling me about the platform and how it would help the people I coach. And then, well, during that portion of the presentation, uh, some of their information was verifiably inaccurate. Let's just put it that way. And then they continued for 30 to 40 minutes to sell me on how the software could make me more money. And as if I don't know that my current software, I use training peaks for a lot of reasons. Um, but it's expensive and I use it because it allows me, I think, to provide a better service. That's the game, I guess. There's a reason why people like shift to business coaching after a while in the training industry because it makes a lot more money um, when you're trying to help other people make more money than just try to provide a better service. But anyway, my fatigue with the industry aside, I get why we don't want to be sold or we don't want to have these calls. There's just shit coming at you all the time. But if you care about your performance, then you will occasionally have to actually speak with another human being about how to improve it. And that may be a phone call. It may be a visit to a PT's office. It may be a like meeting with a dietitian. But sometimes 
we need to actually like reach out for help. And it's not a like, it's not, you also don't need to commit to anything prior to actually being there, right? Like just because you go see a PT doesn't mean you ever need to go back. Just because you have a phone call with me, you can hang up in the middle of it. Like, it's fine. You need to do what takes care of you, but should also put yourself in a present in a position to have enough information to do that. Because when we say that we care about training, we've been putting in months, three, four, six months, a year of work towards this thing. If you say you give a shit about your performance, then we should act like it. And it's not a Monday to Friday thing. It's not a like only workout Wednesdays and Saturday long runs thing. It is an everyday thing. If you keep struggling with your hydration and you really want to get better, or if you keep struggling with your fueling and you have nausea and gut problems and you really want it to get better and you don't even know how much fluid you intake every hour, or you don't start fueling until you're like 90 minutes into your run, then one, if you don't know that that's a bad thing, I'm going to say that right now, you should have fluid and fuel targets based hourly that start from the beginning of your run, not from when you start to get hungry, not base your uh, fluid off of thirst, because by the time you're thirsty, you're already kind of in a hole and it's going to be a real bitch to get out of it by the end of your run. But we need to have a like plan. And if we don't have that plan and you haven't made that plan and you know that that's a problem, then you don't actually care about your hydration and fueling getting better. Because it doesn't t- it takes five minutes. And if you're injured and worried that you, if you're injured and you're worried about an injury and you won't schedule a call with a PT or a sports med doc or whoever, then you're not that worried about your injury. And that's okay, but we should stop feeding our brain this cognitive dissonance that say that we care about performance and then act like we don't. Because it leads to this daily mess of what we say is important to us and how our actions show what's actually important to us. So on that note, I'm going to go eat some food so that later I can train hard and act like I actually give a shit about my training as much as I say I do. So I hope you have a really great day. I'm going to be back in a couple days with another strength series about plyos and power and some such stuff. So I hope you have a really good rest of your day. Go have some fun on the trails.